There's now less than a month left until the start of the GCSE and A-level exam season. You might be looking around and seeing that basically everyone is locked in. A lot of your friends might be talking about how they're done with their flashcards and that they've been grinding through practice papers while you're still here scratching your head trying to figure out how to start. You know, I've been on YouTube for over a year and a half now. So I know that when April comes around, the number one question that people always ask me is, I'm currently on all fives. Is it possible for me to get all eights? Or I'm currently on all fours. Is it possible for me to get all sevens? And so on. And that question has never failed to confuse me. Let's say you ask me that question in my comment section or DMs or email or whatever. And I come back and say, you know what? It's kind of hard. You might not do it. What are you then going to do? Are you just going to not study? Of course not. You'll still put in the work to do as good as possible. So what's the point of asking the question in the first place? Instead, why not use that precious time and mental energy to actually study instead of stressing about that question? So if you're here asking yourself something along the lines of, I'm barely getting fives. Can I get sevens or eights or nines with a little time left? I want you to do something. It might sound goofy, but work with me. Write down that question on a piece of paper. Take that piece of paper, scrunch it up, and then throw it in the bin. See, now you've given your brain the signal that there's no point in stressing about whether you can do it or not. All your time and effort can now be channeled towards revision. That being said though, even if the mentality is there, how do you actually study when you have only a month left? Well, of course, it's not ideal, but there is still time to get something out of the time we have left. Now the traditional NFT method can't really be applied here, but there are some alternatives. Firstly though, Unless it's your first time watching my videos, you'd know that I'm a huge advocate of the 80-20 rule. It's a blueprint on what to prioritize when you're short on time. The 80-20 rule says 80% of your results will come from 20% of the action that you do. For example, let's say somehow you get 100% on a math practice paper. 80% of those marks that you got will be from 20% of the things that you did while studying for that practice paper. So now let's assume that five months is a pretty decent amount of time to study for an exam. If that is true, then you could get 80% of the results that you would get from those five months in only one month because one month is 20% of five months. You see, now all of a sudden we have some hope. We just now need to find that 20% and extrapolate it, make it 100% of what we do while studying. Now that 20%, I'll call it the golden revision technique, it varies from subject to subject, but in general, it's gonna have some common features, going through content, applying that content, and then using active recall and space repetition. So based on those features, how can we formulate our golden revision technique? Well, first, let's start with the most common type of subject, in my opinion, and that's STEM subjects. The way I would study for them would be as follows. I'd first try to find a good video explanation of the content. Now, it's very important that it's a video because I'd watch it at two times speed. And when you're trying to understand, watching a video at two times speed is much more time efficient than just reading a textbook. Now, after finishing the video for any given topic, I'd then go and try to find a deck of flashcard that is specific to your exam board and I'd go through it once or twice because it forces you to apply the content as soon as you learn it. And that gives you the right understanding from the get-go. Now, using this part of the technique alone, you'll notice that you could go through a topic and get the right understanding in literally only 15 to 20 minutes. And so if you do that five times a day, there's no reason for you not to be able to finish all of the content in two weeks. Now, I do hope that you're making notes because this is the type of detail that I usually only charge for. You can find more of these tips as well as everything you need to get the top grades from A to Z in the ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs. Just look at what these guys that took it have to say. You might feel like it's too late, but this is a program that you can finish in a weekend and implement straight away. No matter if you're four months or three weeks out, I can guarantee you that you're going to find benefit in it. And the principles explained within the program are also applicable to A-levels. I use the same exact techniques in my GCSEs and A-levels to get the top grades. I'm currently running an offer where if you sign up within the next week, you get 20% off. And if you don't benefit, then we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So there's no risk whatsoever. Click the first link in the description right now if you're interested. Now that we've gone through the content and digested it, there's only two things left. Spamming practice papers and then going through the flashcards at least once a week. We spam practice papers because by now, you should know that they're the most important part of any studying technique. We spam practice papers because by now you should know that they're the most important part of any studying routine. They teach you exactly how to answer any question that the examiner might give you. And then for the flashcards, it's important that you go through them at least once a week because there might be some small details that you don't really come across in practice questions, but they might still come up on the final exam because they're in the syllabus. And so the only way you can guarantee that you're going to remember those details is by going through your deck of flashcards as often as possible. So now we have our golden revision technique. To summarize it, we go through a video, we go through a deck of flashcards, we spam practice papers, and we also make sure that we do the flashcards once a week. Now, let's see if it passes the test. Do we go through content? Yeah, we go through the videos, which means we're going through the content. Do we apply the content? Yeah, we apply it through the flashcards and the practice questions that we're doing. Does it include space repetition? 
yeah, when you're doing the flashcards once a week, that's space repetition. So you're more likely to remember things. And does it include active recall? Yeah, mostly through the flashcards and also through the practice questions. Now, finally, most importantly, is it time efficient? 100%. We're not wasting time making notes and coloring them in and highlighting them. And we're not wasting time making flashcards, even though if we had more time, that's something I'd usually advocate for. Every part of that technique is centered towards getting the most out of your time. Now that's for STEM subjects. How can you change it up so that it suits other types of subjects as well? Well, for essay-based subjects like English, business, econ, geography, any question that has a lot of long questions, you might not need as many flashcards, so you might focus more time on doing practice essays instead. You get the idea, look at the nature of the subject and then tweak it slightly. And remember, click the first link in the description to get 20% off the ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs, only valid for the next week.